in this experiment, you're going to take iodine, cobalt chloride, hexahydrate, and sand, and make careful observations of each of the three individual components. That would be number one in this flow scheme. So you want to take careful observations of the three isolated chemicals first. And then you want to put it in a 250 milliliter be beaker and mix it all up. What you want to do next is take a 250 milliliter beaker and put it on a hot plate or your heating stove. Put a watch um, evaporating dish over it and then put cause one of those chemicals to sublime into the bottom of the evaporating dish. What will happen is that one of the chemicals will turn into the gaseous form directly and then deposit on the bottom of the evaporating dish. Once the purple gas has cleared, then you know that that particular procedure is over. Make sure you turn off the heating element use hot mitts to remove that beaker and use the forceps or the tongs to cause that to remove the evaporating dish and turn it upside down. You want to look at the bottom and make careful observations of the residue that forms on the bottom of that evaporating dish. To the remaining mixture, you want to add water this will cause one of the substance to dissolve and one of the substance to settle in the bottom. What you want to do next is you want to decant the liquid from that solid residue into another beaker. That causes separation of the second substance. The liquid then is heated and the water is evaporated until you get the third substance. So let me summarize again. You start with a mixture of the three components. It's a heterogeneous mixture. You heat it up on your stove or a hot plate and causes this and cause the separation of one of the components. You're going to be using one of the properties that we just talked about to cause this separation. The remaining two substances in the beaker, you're going to add water to it, a minimum amount of water and cause one of the substance to dissolve in water. The other substance will not dissolve in water. You're going to decant the liquid from that mixture and the solid will remain behind, thereby isolating component number two. You're going to take the liquid solution and heat it up in your uh, stove or your hot plate and cause the water to evaporate and then you get the third component. It's very important that when you do this heating in the very, very last step, you slow down the heating process when you get to about one milliliter of liquid because it's going to be splattering and you want to write careful observations as the last drop of water starts to evaporate. When you Write in your journals the observations that you take for this particular experiment. Use the flow scheme to guide you as to the steps that you're doing. In the first step, you're, you have the individual chemicals, the individual substances, and you're going to write down what they look like individually. And then you're going to circle or write in your lab journal the basis of separation. So you can just write or write in your lab journal. In the second step, you've mixed the substances. You are now causing the in step number two, you're mixing it together and now you're heating up the mixture over a hot plate or over your stove and you're causing one of the substances to sublime into the bottom of the evaporating dish. Now 
you want to write down your detailed observation of that process and then you want to circle which particular component is being separated in, by that particular procedure. If it's iodine, then you want to write iodine in your lab journal. If it's cobalt chloride, you want to write down cobalt chloride in your lab journal. If it's sand, you want to write down sand in your lab journal. Now, after step two, we go to step three here, and we We add water, deionized water, to the mixture that is in the beaker. For step three, when you add water into the beaker, you want to write down what happens as you add water to that beaker and whether you cause a separation of one of that component. If in that particular step you didn't separate any of the component, then simply write none. In step four, you're decanting the liquid from the solid, so you want to write down your observation uh, for that particular procedure, and you want to write down which component is isolated in that particular step. For step five, you're taking the solution and you're heating it in, you're taking a solution and you're heating it over a hot place and causing the liquid to evaporate. You want to write down your detailed observation of that process and then you want to write down what substances you isolate. At the end, you're going to isolate sub, um, substance A, B, and C, sand, cobalt chloride, iodine, in not any order, and you want to identify which was the first chemical you isolated in step two, which was the second chemical you isolated in a subsequent step, and which was the last chemical you isolated in the last procedure. When you get to when you get when you get to the post lab questions when you get to the post lab questions you come across this particular question the flow screen shows um, labels one through ten answer the following first one what three substances are mixed the second one which chemical is the majority of the mixture. The third one, what is the color of the gas? Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 here correspond to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on in the flow scheme. When you write an appropriate discussion for this experiment, write a discussion in terms of what you did in this experiment, what you learned in this experiment, according to the background presented in this particular lab, how is matter classified, talk about how we take matter and categorize it in terms of its hierarchy to the universe and how matter can be broken down to hetero and homogeneous systems, etc. For question C in the post lab question, the question is ambiguous in terms of um, understanding what the question is really asking for. Let me try and explain. The question says that you can take cobalt chloride iodine and sand and separated from each other because we use different experimental technique. But why were we not able to take, for example, cobalt chloride 
and separate the cobalt from the chloride and get the chloride and the cobalt isolated. So think about that and answer in terms of what we talked about. Finally, make sure you turn in your digital photos of this particular experiment as well as uh, photos of the entries in your lab journal.